case of cold beer and an empty trailer around here that's a deadly combination I uh, went over to Cold War Motors to see Scott this afternoon and uh, picked up a little something something here didn't have time to unload it before a uh, early anniversary celebration date with Mama Cat. It's uh, going to be 21 years here pretty soon. We went to Cirque du Soleil and had a really nice evening. So now, of course, it's it's late. We're back home, but I got to get this unloaded because I got to be out early in the morning. So I won't have time to do it tomorrow. Uh, I see my phone here is about to die, so I'm going to get this unloaded and we'll take a look at it after. So there we have it in all its glory. The 1977 Garden Master. Yet another MTD store brand, I'm sure. I'm not sure what store, if anybody knows who marketed the Garden Master name here in Canada. It might be Home Hardware or something like that. It's an 834, so 34 inch deck, 8 horsepower uh, Briggs under the hood. It's all complete. Scott has no reason to believe that it won't fire right up but it is i'm told the low idle champion of cold war motors which is no small title the issue being that you know as soon as you engage the blades or anything put it under any kind of load it dies off so it just doesn't have any capability of generating more power so you know fuel system issues nothing new to us we should be able to look after that pretty quickly there we are I'm looking forward to getting it running. I don't think I'm going to tonight because it's already quite late, but there we have it. Eight horsepower. What more can a guy say? Throw a battery in it, throw some fresh fuel in it, and uh, we'll see what happens. But overall, pretty nice little rig, and uh, the price was right. So how could I say no? It's very similar chassis-wise to uh, Wild Turfy. I believe it's the same basic chassis with, you know, different sheet metal on it. So, um, yeah, should be pretty fun. Stay tuned. We got a tractor to start. First start for the 1977 MTD built Garden Master. It's got an eight horsepower Briggs, and I'm told that with a battery and fresh gas, it should just fire right up. So I've done those things, and uh, you can see just over there, my new buddy Lawson has joined us tonight and uh, he's much friendlier than the other uh, shop kitties so hopefully he'll be a little more help right buddy right you gonna help doesn't look good so without further ado let's see what happens I really don't quite know what to expect um, park brake probably a good idea to apply that Blades are off. I suspect we're in neutral. Speeds. Start. Okay. I don't really know what that means. Um, oh, no cap back on. Hood on just because it looks good. T on. Yeah, I think our headlights even work. Here goes nothing. Do we have a choke? Do we have anything like that? What's this? What does this do? Oh, we have nothing. Nothing at all. Could be. We've got an ammeter wire here that's all. Well, that has to be hooked up to make it run or not. Let's see. Oh, that sounds better.
And there we go. Maybe we don't have a spark. I think we have a spark. I think I just discovered a fuel shut off. That's probably the problem. Choke on. Table's gonna need a little work, but. sold Garden Master in Canada. Um, this was likely bought in central Alberta 1977 so you know it's an MTD house brand but uh, who's, whose house? I don't know I'd like to know. Turf Track being co-ops brand this might be like uh, home hardware or something like that or I found a catalog for a pro hardware but I don't know where from so if anybody out there knows, let me know. I'd be really interested to find out. All right, I'm heading to bed, so uh, take care, everybody, and until next time, keep it in the litter box. Cheers.
Oh, oh no! <laughs> you monkey. Is your truck gonna splash? Mm. Are we gonna throw a rock in? Mm. Make it splash in the water. Make the rock splash. Make the rock go sploosh. Ooh. <laughs> Can you throw another one? We'll get this low spot filled eventually. You gonna throw that? What's gonna happen? Oops. Do you think it will sink or will it float? Oh, it floats like a boat. Sploosh. How many last times can there be to pull this carburetor off and on? It was hunting some and I was hoping maybe it was just an idle mixture thing, but that hasn't seemed to have any effect. So, I did a little bit of research, and there's a lot of, uh, even on the Briggs and Stratton groups on Facebook, there was a lot of advice given to guys like, oh, check your fuel lines, and check your float. It's clearly a setup like this, where it's carbon tank, and we don't have a float or a fuel line. But in sorting out the wheat from the chaff, I discovered three potential grains of wisdom, and... We'll talk about those now. The first one is the governor spring potentially being weak. We know ours isn't weak because it's new, but initially when I installed it, I didn't like how tight it gets on full throttle. So I installed it on this closer hole here. And the only picture I was able to find of this actual setup had it over here. So I've moved it there. Um, there's very little information on this engine online. I don't know why Briggs and Stratton has a variety of diagrams, but not for this model. And YouTube is full of videos of setting up the linkage on horizontal shaft engines, but not this vertical shaft engine. So information is oddly scarce, even though this is a pretty common engine. Um, so I've moved that and that helped some, but not entirely. The other possibilities are an intake leak or a clogged, you know, likely the idle jet. So if we're talking about a potential intake leak, if you watched earlier on in the videos, this mounting point for the fuel tank was broken off and had been, I don't know, crudely repaired. So I tried to epoxy a threaded insert in place and it didn't hold so I got some uh, metal epoxy and that seems like, you know, JB Weld, and that seems like it's going to work. So that affects up here the position of our carburetor. So yeah, we have an intake leak and if I press this in, hold it in, it actually runs a little better. There's also an o-ring inside here and that o-ring is like many things on this machine, old and dried out. So I'm going to take off the carburetor and replace it. And while I have this carburetor off yet again, I'm going to go through it with a fine tooth comb and make sure that, you know, it could just be a piece of grit from the cleaning process before has gotten into that idle jet. It is very small. There, you can see that o-ring, and uh, that's a bit rubbery, but it's not very round. It's pretty squared off now. That could be interesting to find. Get out of there. Great. <laughs> 